tell you what, over the last couple of days, I've been absolutely traumatised. Traumatised, I tell you. Well, I will tell you after the titles. We're going to take on the world. Yeah, I don't know how I've actually coped and haven't had some sort of weird nervous breakdown or some breakdown of some description. Because on Thursday, right, obviously you know I'm a graphic designer, I have to draw stuff and things. I had to do artwork for 22 different um, Gaylord's things. Like your standard Gaylord thing, your progress Gaylord thing, your... Poly, polyamory or something like that. I think I thought that was like... A, chocolate bar oh no that's Toblerone isn't it but anyway so I had to do all these right because you have to have the proper art but you can't just nick a jpeg off the internet it's not how it works so I had to redraw all these and I had to draw it for two different things and I had to all put it on um, the certain client's shop so there was that so obviously then that took a, all day so I just had Gaylordness in front of my eyes all day I even had to do the tranny one I'm sure Claire will be happy about that yeah so I weren't happy about that. Obviously, I'm taking a piss a bit, yeah. Or am I? Anyway, and then the following day, I have a guess who I had to do artwork for. Now, I didn't have to do it for them directly, because if I had had to do it directly, I would have refused to do it, to be honest with you. But because this is a long-standing client that I was doing this for, I couldn't say I'm not doing it. I have a guess who I was doing artwork for. Come on. What's been the biggest thing of the last five years? Well, not five years, since the, you know... Uh, you know, the, you know. Mm, mm. <coughs> oh, dear me. Yep. I had to do stuff for the PZ company. It was PZ and it was celebrating 175 years or something. Well, it was, it was well, I can say it, can't I? Because I'm not talking about that. So it was called Pfizer and then 175 under it. And I thought, what, what are they celebrating? Because they surely haven't been around for 175 years. Or maybe they're celebrating the death of 175,000 people due to their injections. I'm joking, or am I? Because you don't know, do you? Isn't it weird? The, um, was it Alpha Zulu one? You know, the other people, right? Isn't it funny? They're the first ones that have come out and actually admitted that on rare occasions, the, the um, you know what, causes myocarditis and heart issues and all that sort of stuff. That thing that all us Tim Fall at wearers were saying ages ago is actually true hey and then it's funny because that particular one isn't even an mrna one that's supposed to be the least harmful so i wonder i wonder i'll tell you what that fires 175 might have been because they were saying well it's actually 75 really they you could they wouldn't disclose their test stuff and all the thing over there <clears throat> for 75 years would they that got turned over by the way but who the hell would hide it for 75 years if they say dodgy in there so yeah there you go so I traumatised, but actually I'm quite happy I've just said that because now it gives it validation, doesn't it? That, a, you know, the Alpha Zulu ones have come out and started talking about it. It's going to be drip fed now. And they're going to say, look over here, look over here, something else going on, like plasticine people. Or look over here, look over here. Might be something going on in Russia again. Here's a little thought. Because I haven't had a rant for a while. Have you? Let's have a little rant. Here's a thought for you. If you're one of these, let's support free plasticine, for a start, you're an idiot because it ain't got anything to do with the, the marches and that have got nothing to do with it. And when you look at the plebs that are doing it, they're all commies, right? All idiots. But anyway, I'm going off on there. Just imagine for one moment, right, on October the 7th, if Israel had sat on its hands and done nothing, didn't respond to the attacks. And remember, there's, if reports are correct, I have to be careful how I say this. If reports are correct, over a thousand people were killed and there's 200 odd hostages, wasn't there? There's people raped and killed and women dragged around the street dead. I mean, I saw the pictures of that. I saw, I saw pictures of a fella having his head chopped off with a, with a hoe, right? And I'm, well, like I say, it's, it's, it's terrible some of the stuff you can get to see these days. But anyway, so Israel sat on its hands. Do you think 
for one moment these stupid twats of students that are sitting there barricading themselves into their universities would have called for the hostages to be released. Do you? Because I don't, because they're fucking idiots. And I watch something else. There's someone else I follow now on, on YouTube called Paul Thorpe. I don't know whether you know him. If you, if you don't, just look up Paul Thorpe. He's a Londoner. Well, he's from Brighton, I think. But he's a wide boy, you know. Or he's as again. But he's quite posh. Well, he's done well for himself by the looks of it. But anyway, he showed a video from Brighton. I believe it was from Brighton. Um, I'll try and find it and put a link below if I remember. Um, and it was starting off with this bloke obviously standing up for Jews. And uh, in the background, then there's these stupid women, foreign, free Palestine, free Palestine, free, and then these kids behind them. I mean, I swear to God, they were ten, between 10 and 15 years of age, right? And what were they saying? They're doing all this lot, fuck Israel, piss off Israel, and a lot worse than that that I can't say on YouTube. Okay, and these little shits, because it's popular, isn't it? It's popular now. You see, can kind of see how that all went off in Germany in the late 30s, can't you? You can see. Because people have been brainwashed. It's the same with the Ukraine thing. Why is it, right, that everyone's marching, calling for a ceasefire, right, against a terrorist organisation called Hamas, right? Because that's the truth of it. Why are people not calling for peace in Ukraine, peace, peace deals? Don't forget, Boris said no to Zelensky having peace deals. No, don't do peace deals. We'll give you money to keep it going. And so have other nations. Biden has said similar so, and that war just keeps trending on. That one's acceptable, isn't it? But the other one isn't. See, people's double standards. That's what pisses me off in life. Anyone who knows me well will say, if I said to you, What's, what does Paul really hate? They will say double standards when they say one thing and do another, when there's no parity. They, they change their opinions depending on the situation rather than on what's actually happening. Or rather, they're changing their... Um, attitude towards things the way they speak about things depending on what group they're speaking to that's probably more accurate so they won't say shit on facebook but if you're having a beer with them and call them it they might actually be on your side but they don't say it so there you go and had a little rant for you. that wasn't a real rant was it that's just an opinion anyway i think i might do beer o'clock with paulus the woodman because i've actually been saving the beer since last week i guess you not well not last week might have been yeah it was last week i think I don't know, it might have been a couple of days ago, but anyway, <laughs> I've got one that's got sea salt in it. So we'll have a go at that in a bit. Lee's doing tea at two, so I'll have beer at two. Is it? Oh, it's only eight minutes. Woohoo! Speak to you in a bit. Bye. Just before we continue with this vlog, there was someone, a couple of people actually, been asking for one of my tunes that is called Forever Walking and saying, where can we get that? So I've now put that up on Buy Me A Coffee. Now, just for everyone, you need to know this. Going on Buy Me A Coffee doesn't mean you have to buy us anything, okay? Just go on there, you get some exclusive stuff, you get some early releases, the two camping ones, people on there saw it before you did, they did. And all these tracks that we put up there, you can take those, download them, use them for whatever you want. So if you've got your own vlog, you can use me music for it, don't ask for anything. So you don't have to pay nothing. It's just a different social network and I'd love it to be better than it is. I honestly would. But yeah, so if you're into that track that's called Forever Walking, you can get it from there. So I just thought I'd better kind of say that because I was asked. Okay? Carry on with the vlog. Bye. Well, I'll be honest with you, I thought that Lee and Sue would probably be out here doing tea at two out on Naughty Bench. But as they're not, I thought I'll come and do beer o'clock with Paul as well. No, I'm out on the Naughty Bench. I've got a bit more room. So this is what we're looking at today. Let's see if you can see that. I should have this camera set on focusing on products or something like that i don't know it's a weird mode that should come back to me but anyway this is beer moretti now a lot of people i'm sure know what the normal beer 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 moretti is it's an italian thing it's normally got a red a more red label i've got to put my goggles on but this is actually a slightly different it's called sale de mare which is an unfiltered premium lager with a hint of italian sea salt it's 4.8 percent volume and on the back it says Dive into a full, oh dear, nearly blow a bubble there. Whatever's going on. Dive into full flavoured refreshment with Biera Moretti Sally de Mer, born from the Italian coast. A medium bodied premium lager at 4.8% ABV, unfiltered, unfiltered for a natural haze and enriched with a hint of Italian sea salt. So let's have a look what it looks like, shall we? Not sure whether you can see the cup, but I'll show you when I'm pouring it. 
Oops. Here we go. Let's have a look. See if we can bring it towards you. See if it focuses. I've just seen a ladybird climbing up the tripod. That's going to go on the camera in a minute. <laughs> Oh, that was done quite well. Oh, 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 Mr. Beagley. Oh, can you see it wobbling? <laughs> I tell you. Anyway, let me just let it settle for a minute. Let me just get the last bit in. He cried. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the ladybird's going right up the gimbal. Here it comes. Oh, oh. Sorry, I'm getting waylaid now. Oh, look at that. That is precisely a point, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a little taste of this, shall we? That's quite nice. Not sure whether you can see that ladybird was almost walked on the lens there. That tastes nice. I'll be honest with you, can't taste any sea salt. So that's a load of old bollocks. But would I say give it a go? Without a doubt. There you go, have another little look at the bottle. Look out for it, give it a go. In Tesco's you can get three of these for six quid. So a couple of quid each. It's not so bad, and it is a big bottle. It's a 660 milliliter bottle. Bye. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I mean, it's really funny. You'd never think of Peru as some kind of leading light in the world, would you? You'd probably never even thought of Peru as a country that would emit, exude common sense you wouldn't would you but have a guess what they've done they've come out and said this stuff with transsexual polyamory demisexual duosexual all this bullshit gender bollocks is a mental illness like i've been saying for years yep i've always said it's attention seeking bollocks is a cock in a frock and claire's going to be devastated that a country has basically said it's a load of old bollocks. Just thought I'd bring that to you. Come on, Peru! <laughs> and meanwhile, us in the UK will keep on um, pandering to these absolute mentally ill wanktards. Bye! I've just remembered there's something else that's majorly important. Tomorrow, today's Saturday, obviously, so tomorrow on Sunday, you're going to witness history. I guarantee it. Luton Town Football Club are playing Fulham away. Oh no, at home, sorry. And um, we are going to beat Fulham 12-0. And Nottingham Forest are going to lose. And Luton are going to stay up. Mark my words, you know I'm always right. <laughs> Might not have got that one right, but hey-ho. Lee, what are you doing? Tidying my lady garden. Oh yeah. <laughs> that time. It got kind of overgrown, hasn't it? And smelt a bit. These didn't last very long. I don't know if these pots are too small. What were they? Um, primulas. But then I haven't watered them. Primulas? I don't know what that means. Is it's, that like, what? it's like a primrose, but... Oh, I thought it was a Toyota. Not yellow. It's got batteries in it. Prius. Primula. Wasn't you. it cheese spread? Oh, Primula. Primula. I'll Primula. tell you. Lee, what are those, your nice purple petals? Irises. They're quite nice to be fair, look. But they're quite flappy, aren't they? They've got big flaps. Sometimes big flaps are a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is, I can't remember. Threatening. You all know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, nice flaps. Bye. What do you think, Hector? Yeah, not impressed. Off he goes. <laughs> it's because his ball's over there. I'm just going to empty out this pot because there's... 
Mm, roots <laughs> from previous plants so uh, then I think that's possibly why the other one didn't grow because there's too much going on in it. Yeah, the what? Huh? What didn't grow? The primula, the primula that was in there before. So uh, I've just got the tray from underneath the um, they died from underneath the uh, arches. What is it? <laughs> God, my brain. I don't know. There we go. A little bit nervous. The tray from under the um, fire pit. So uh, just to catch everything, so I don't make the table too dirty. What are these? Petunias. Nicotiana. But they look like petunias a bit. Antirhinums. Oh, they're the ones that look like <laughs> snapdragons. They. <laughs> these are quite good. These are three, three of these trays for six pound in uh, B and M. So didn't think that was too bad. Oh, I think we've got two plants in that one. So even better. <laughs> oh, I forgot to bring my watering can. <laughs> Hector is not letting Paul have his ball. I touched the ball and it flew up in the air. Oh! oh. I really should bring home my a pair of gloves from the allotment. Oh dear, they look a bit sorry for themselves in there, but I'm sure they'll be alright once they grow a bit. Use these trays at the allotment. Splendid. <laughs> I like them because you can see the roots. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, that's overgrown. I know. Your, your lady garden now. I tell you what, that's like a seventies overgrown, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> That's like a, like a 70s porn movie, that. Oh, why do you have to lower or reduce everything? You remember that used to be on video tier, <laughs> didn't it? The, old, the, the earlier 70s and 80s porn. And you'd always have the tracking issues where you'd have a long bench across it. And just on your vinegar stroke as well. Grim. Why do you have to spoil my lady gardening? <laughs> lady gardening. <laughs> You're sullying my lady gardening. Barking. Do you want this? You're not allowed to bark.
Lee? Yes. You see that mushroom? Yes. If that was a man's mushroom, mm. it really would go, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. I can't even say, I don't know where you are, where are you? It's falling oh. up in the air. Oh, don't know. oh yeah. <laughs> hey, you have to. <laughs> Bye. Right then, guys, what do you think? I mean, I did help Lee trim near her hole, right? And she's done quite a good job down to here. So, but then, you know, not far from the hole, it's quite, it's still quite a bit overgrown. And as you get to the nether regions, it's not quite so bad. But then on the outside, I mean, over on the far side of her region, I've um, given it a bit of a trim. And over this side, it still looks a bit untrimmed. So I think she's done an uneven trim. I still think that there's a lot of um, overgrowth by the hole. Bye. Happy Sundays everybody, as you can see, I'm in the greenhouse and it's 84 degrees Fahrenheit in here, so it's 30 degrees centigrade, so as you see it's quite hot, all the plants seem to be doing well, they look a bit dry now so I'm going to give them all the water, we've been here for quite a while actually, oh I'm not on camera am I, um, yeah we've uh, I've mowed the lawn and we've put up a tomato thing, hold on I'll just turn the camera, see if I can see what we're doing. I can't see much. Yeah, there's our uh, tomato thing. We've put it all down and hooked it into the floor. So that should be all right. So Lee can plant out, plant her tomatoes out. The rose is doing well. And Lee has just pulled our first garlic, haven't you, Lee? Yeah. Should we go and show, show us your garlic? Well, I'm just checking whether... So it said 30, 24 to 36 weeks maturity, and it's been 33 weeks, so... Uh... Come on, let's go and show them. Because okay. I said to Lee this morning, I said, cool, they look a bit yellow and nasty, don't they? <laughs> well, dry and done. But she thought, oh, well, they might be done. So there it is. Look at that. Our first garlic. And what do you have to do with that now, Lee? Just leave it. Well, I think, yeah, I think you have to dry it out. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, well, it's hard to know whether it's done. <laughs> well, I would say it must be. You're close enough within that window. Anyway. I'm getting on by. So what we're really up here for today is Lee's planting some stuff out. So she's already started planting some cabbages out. She's going to repot her tomatoes out in that little thing I just shown you. I'm going to water all our stuff in here and I'm going to replant the crispy lettuce things and um, maybe a few other little bits and bobs. I'll tell you something though, and this, this irritates me a bit. Um, the strimmer, the We've got electric mower and strimmer, or battery one. The, the mower's mm, kind of all right. It's not too bad, but the strimmer's a piece of shit. It's not powerful enough, not got enough torque, apart from for doing grass. You can't do any bush or anything. It's, it's absolute nonsense. So I thought, yeah, well, I want a decent petrol one. And um, have a guess what? They're so hard to get hold of now. Everything's battery. And the funny thing is, people think that's good for the environment. Well, it ain't. It really ain't. How do you charge them batteries, everybody? Where's that coming from? Imagine the amount of solar you'd have to have on your house to do it. I mean, we can do it on the boat just about in summer, but not, certainly not in winter. So no, it's absolute nonsense. So it's much harder to buy petrol mowers. And you need a petrol mower and an allotment. You can't really have battery things. You know, I've, I bought a big battery for that mower and it still only just does this little bit of allotment land, which is ridiculous. And those batteries cost a lot of money. 100 odd quid for the big batteries. So there you go, moan over, but it's irritating, isn't it? Forcing us into crappy battery power, and it is crap. Simple as that. Give me a petrol streamer. I'm going to have to order one online, aren't I? Oh, I don't know. I'm now convinced that we did this the right way by mounding up the middles and then bringing it back down onto the spuds, because now what will end up happening, it will eventually reverse, and they will be on an incline. So as you can see, these, this row here is the ones that I've just earthed up. And then the row next, don't need earthing up yet because the rain's just coming up. They're the second earlies. You can see they're sitting in the trench. So there you go. And he's been a busy girl putting, I can't remember what she called them, galoshes. <laughs> I don't know. Galoshes. <laughs> and then over here, he's done some more planting. So yes, it's looking good, isn't it, everyone? 
So I can't remember what they cabbages and cauliflowers and stuff, I think. And we will take that first garlic back with us. Let it dry out, see what happens. Here you can see I have replanted the crispy lettuce mix or whatever it is. So there's one down there, there's one down here. It's very warm in here, bless them. So let's hope it doesn't get too hot in here. Not a lot I can do. You can see these really have perked up since um, I watered them earlier. So yes, we shall take some of those today and have it with our tea. Well, we probably won't have it with the tea, we'll have it tomorrow. Just got left over Chinese tonight. Bye. And one last thing in here, look at these. The old chilies are doing quite well, aren't they? So six survived. A couple didn't. I don't really know what happened to those last two on the end. But these planted some more and there's all sorts of stuff growing in here. So look at all these down here. Splendid. They're all leeks. And those are spring onions. Fantastic. Well, that's us done, isn't it, Lee Lawson? Oh, in more ways than one. We've had a proper hard day. I'm absolutely shattered. My back's aching. And I tell you, I've got a sweaty ball sack. Oh, well, it's hot weather, isn't it? It's stuck to my legs. I tell you what, it'd be like marmite down my seams. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we're now going back. Got inspection on May. Ah. Right. Lee interrupted me then. Sorry, I was just reading the notice. We're now going back to sit on the naughty bench, right? We're going to have two computers out there and an iPad, <laughs> or, or two iPads and a computer. No, nah, we'll just we'll have a computer and an iPad. The iPad will watch F1 because Morris, you, uh, Norris, you'll never know. He, he might do well. And then on the other telly, on the computer, we'll watch um, either Luton versus Fulham because we're going to win 12-0, <laughs> or we'll watch Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace to see how it takes me. Um, and of course there'll be copious amounts of alcohol drink, drunk because we've deserved it because we're such good gardenists. <laughs> Say bye Lee. Bye Lee. <laughs> I'm such a bell end sometimes. Honestly, have a guess what? The Grand Prix was at two o'clock, not at four o'clock. So I've missed that. <laughs> oh dearie me, what a bell end. Anyway. I guess it's a toss-up between Luton and Villa now. Bye. It's not been the greatest afternoon. I got it wrong. Luton didn't win 12-0 and stay up in the Premiership. I think we lost 4-2. I kind of lost the interest. And Aston Villa. <laughs> they lost 5-0 at Crystal Palace. That's been a load of old shit. I'll tell you what, not only did I miss a Grand Prix. <laughs> oh, well, it's not even worth talking about, is it? It's not even worth talking about. What a load of old bollocks. Bye. <laughs>